So good morning. Welcome to Krishna's classroom. Now in the last lecture, we have looked at measurable functions and uh, some properties of that like whether composition of measurable functions is measurable or given a set of finite set of functions, measurable functions, what about the maximum and minimum functions, are they measurable? Then we also use this to prove that A F measurable F can be split into two difference of two positive or not non negative like F plus and F plus. So F we wrote as minus where F plus and F minus were defined last time. And uh, let me correct myself. In the last lecture, towards the end, instead of writing F minus, I wrote F inverse. So this is replaced by minus. So that is a correction. I think two places it is coming up while uh, writing on the board. And uh, I hope you would realize it, even otherwise, you would realize it and just correct it so it won't be carried away. And mod f is equal to plus minus. So we found that if f is measurable, f plus is measurable, f minus is measurable. And therefore, their difference is measurable. Sorry, their uh, sum is measurable. Therefore, border is measurable. Okay, so, so these are all the properties that. Anyway, that's not. The, so that's where we ended last time. Now, what we look at is what happens to the convergence of sequences of functions because you know the reason for it. Because whenever we see what we plan to do is this given f we write it as a Limit of a sequence of measurable functions. Then we explore. Whether integral F and BM converges to integral it is this the question. Or rather, what we do is we 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 try to obtain the sequence 
define the convergence. If so, <laughs> A sentence to define. Thereby Defining integral of the limit. So, this involves all sorts of things like we are working with a class of measurable functions. First of all, you have to talk about the limit of F1 and in what sense? That is a question. If we fix that, then you ask whether it is again a measurable function so that we can possibly talk about this integral. And if so, there is some sense in saying, in defining limit Fn dm tends to integral f dm where f is the so called limit of f n. So, we need all sorts of, of uh, you know knowledge about the limit etc. So, it is with this objective we start with our next talk namely the consideration of convergence. Now, you will see this idea coming here. So, essentially what you are asking is whether Integral and limit can be interchanged. It amounts to that. Okay. And it is not something that you can easily jump across the integral. The limit can easily jump across the integral and get the result. <coughs> so, there needs possibly some more conditions, etc., which we are not bothered at the moment. But we start with a very simple question. What do we mean by limit of Fn, where Fn is a measurable sequence of functions? That is the first thing. Secondly, <coughs> the sense whether what happens to the limiting function is this also measurable? Okay. And then, of course, the crucial question that we will take up while considering integration is that whether you can jump, the limiting process can jump across the integral. Okay, so with this <coughs> brief, uh, you know, spotlights into what we are going to do in future, we will go to Considering the details. So, let Fn be a sequence of measurable functions Rather, we shall attribute this measurability here as a sequence of functions. Sequence of functions. With a common domain.
Ciro. So we shall explore the following state. The sequence and verges. So, a priori, we have assumed that they have a common double, and that is essential. Okay. So we consider convergence for different types of convergence that are possible. So, in fact, we consider the concepts of point-wise convergence. and uniform. And we also bring in some measure theoretic ingredients into it, something like point wise convergence almost everywhere. Ok, so we define that. For a sequence Fn of functions, what I mean to say is real valued functions, if with common domain. E and a subset A of we say that One <laughs> Fn converges point wise converges to a point wise on A. If limit n tending to infinity fn x equal to f of x for every See, fn x for a fixed x is a number sequence. So, you can talk about the convergence of that. So, for each x belonging to A, this number, the corresponding number sequence should converge to a number and that should be equal to the given f. Or you can define f as in that fashion on provided it converts. Ok. Now, we slightly more uh, liberal 
and organs in the following sense already you see already we accept that r is endowed with the lebesgue measure so in that sense that we are talking so to the sequence we have point wise which we have already defined almost everywhere universal notion on a if f n converges to f point wise on a slash b with b measure of b that means except for a set of measures zero in a everywhere else the sequence converges point wise to f that means we allow some anomaly i mean some points to be left out but we insist that the point where it may fail to convert is a set of measure zero f n converges uniform <laughs> on a to the function for every epsilon exists an index n is a natural number such that which says here you are talking about convergence at each point to begin with and then we say that given epsilon positive 
See, the convert the point wise convergence criteria says that given an epsilon positive, there exists an n such that for all n greater than capital N. But what is what happens in the case of uh, point wise convergence? You see that this n would depend on not only epsilon but also on x, the point there. So it may not the same n may not work for all points x belonging to A. But when we say uniform convergence, it means that there exists some n which is which depends only on epsilon and not on the point x such that fx minus fn x or less of that is less than epsilon for all x belonging to A and for every n greater than this particular n, n does not depend on this. Now this is this is what you call uniform convergence. So that's it. So we have considered two types of convergence, namely convergence to F point wise, convergence uniformly and convergence to F point wise, we also introduced the idea of not only point wise convergence, but point wise convergence almost everywhere that allowing the freedom that this convergence may fail on a set of measure 0. Okay. As we have already said, whenever we talk about uh, the convergence of F n to F, we naturally assume that Fn, all the Fn and F have a common. Okay. So, remarks, some remarks. If Whatever be the mode of convergence, we assume and F have the common domain, a common domain. On which we talk about commands. So we will not be, we will not keep on saying that this is a common domain already. So further. Converges to F point wise means limit n tending to infinity for every x belonging to. And similar remarks hold for F and converges to F uniformly. Uh, okay. So similar remarks.
Vous les comprenez. Now clearly you see that point wise convergence implies sorry uniform convergence implies point wise convergence. Observe that uniform convergence implies But not vice versa. Not vice versa. <laughs> <coughs> now we got some results from analysis which we have already seen so further remarks this part uh, takes up the consequences. So, these are the remarks on that. The first criteria is that if we say sequence of Continuous functions on A Fn converges to a point is Does not F is so continuity is not something that is preserved under point wise convergence, whereas uniform convergence does. Similarly, If the sequence of functions fn is dream a sequence of Riemann integrable functions, on on an interval. Then the point-wise limit, the point-wise limit of need not be. In 
he will not be Riemann integrable. So, the in Riemann integrability is also like continuity not preserved under point wise limit. <laughs> So, on the other hand, what we are going to show is that if you have a sequence of measurable functions on A, then and the sequence converges point wise to F, then F is going to be measurable. Now, the third remark is that measurability. is preserved under point wise converges that's interesting you need some stronger form of convergence to count for this or some other criteria. So, mere point wise convergence is not going to uh, you know ensure that the limiting function is continuous or or inherits the properties of continuity or Riemann integral. But measurability is something that is taken care of. So, we will prove this. So, we will first state the theorem. Let Fn be a sequence of measurable on a measurable set E. Huh? <laughs> Which converges? Almost everywhere on E converges point wise almost everywhere on E to a function. Then F is measurable. That means sequence of measurable functions under point wise convergence <coughs> have a limiting function which is also measurable. This is a very, very useful result that we are going to see while we develop the calculation. <coughs> okay. So we give the proof is not difficult at all. <coughs> we exploit the previous result that whatever happens on a set of measure zero, okay, if it is valid for a function that is restricted to the Complement of the set of measure zero holds, then it is holds on the whole. It's almost every. So let E not be a subset of e.
the lepid vessel of E0, let us see. Now let Fn converge this to point wise. On which in which in fact means that f n converges to f almost everything. Then it follows that. From our discussions, in the previous lectures, that F is measurable if and only if F restricted to So, measurability if it holds on a complement of a set of measure 0, that is enough, means the f is measurable. Okay. That is the almost everywhere advantage. Now, you see that this almost everywhere advantage comes in because you take a continuous function on an interval a b, you modify it at a finite set of points. Look at the integral of the modified function and the original function. You will see that the integrals on that interval are the same. So, change of the function on a set of finite set of points there does not affect the integral at all. And more generally, if you have the function f and g different on a set of uh, measure 0 elsewhere equal, then you see that the you are talking about integrability, the integrability, uh, uh, sorry, the, the concept of measurability will be preserved. This is what we have shown earlier. And because of this, we will consider the problem with Fn converging point wise to F on the entire in fact all that we want to prove is that F restricted to E slash E naught is a measurable function. Ok. Right. So, let us do that. So, without therefore, it is sufficient sufficient to prove that if a pen converges to F point wise now you can work on this 
एफ एन कन्वर्जस टू एफ पॉइंट वाइज ऑन ई स्लैश ई नॉट देन एफ इज मेशरेबल ऑन ई स्लैश ई नॉट बट यूजिंग दिस क्राइटेरिया इफ एफ रेस्ट्रिक्टेड टू ई स्लैश ई नॉट इज मेशरेबल देन एफ इज मेशरेबल ऑन दे एंटायर सो वी आर यूजिंग दैट ओके राइट सो व्हाट यू डू द यूजुअल टेक्निक or you take the b arbitrary matrix we show that the set of for x belonging to for which and for every choice of e okay for every so that f is special push so what we want to do is we want to analyze this particular set and you know that f comes as the limit of fn and we know fn is special okay therefore for x belonging to e therefore the set fx is less than e less than c if and only if there exists natural numbers n and k for which f j x is less than c minus 1 by n for every j so we have an n directly okay see this is epsilon positive and by n is taken as epsilon it is epsilon positive we have taken it in this form so that we can let uh, n tend to infinity now you see that see look at the scenario the scenario is this See this scenario is something like this. Suppose this is it. Okay. Then what do you have? Have some f n. This is f n. So you have a sequence of functions of this kind. So many functions. now at some x you look at the values of this is and this is your okay 
right? Therefore, what you need is that a sentence to infinity that these two should co close in. That's what happened. So, given an epsilon, there exists a n such that um, fn x minus fx modulus of that is less than epsilon whenever whenever n is greater than n. Okay. So, we are interested in analyzing this. Okay, so let us do that. This is the function f, and this is possible function. Something. This is your effort. Yeah. What we are interested in is this. This is we are going to cut this. Let's see. So we are looking at all those points for which fx is less than c. So, what are the places that happens? This is the place where fx is less than c. This is where x is less than c. And then this is also the place where Fx is less than C. That's it. Now we take an epsilon neighborhood of that. Okay. So this is, and we choose that epsilon to be, and this is C minus 1 point. And look at what happens at a point. See, you take an x here. You have got fx. This is fx. And this is, these are the values that you are considering. This is fnx. This is fx. So we want so we take f n x less than one by n. Okay. So, Fn converges to F means there exists, yeah, this is what. So, you, what you have is that Fnx, we are looking at those places where Fnx is less than C minus 1 by N. Okay. Now, you see that the uh, Or fnx minus fx be less than 1 by look at all those points where this happens. Okay. So what do you have? You've got there exists natural numbers. N and J mm. 
for which f j x is less than c minus 1 by n for every j greater than or equal to So look at this collection. So Fj is question. For every j. Therefore, you have x belonging to me. This question. This Okay. Therefore, take the intersection of all this. Is question. Why it is measurable? Because each of this is measurable for each j, therefore from j uh, ranging from k to infinity, this is measurable. Okay. Now what we observe is that we look at this set. This is the set that we want to analyze. X belonging to E. F J X This is equal to union one less than or equal to k okay, of all this. So what is this? It's equal to intersection j equal to k to infinity. So you can prove that every point that satisfies this condition is here. For some, for some value of k, and then it is there. Conversely, every point in this, you take first take the intersection, and then the union. This is there in this collection. Therefore, these two sets are use the pointwise convergence. Need some little bit of careful. Analysis. Therefore, what do we have? See, each of this is a measurable set. Each of this is a measurable set. Therefore, their intersection is a countable intersection. 
which is a measurable set and then the union of for each k and n this collection is a countable collection which is again their union is a measurable set therefore this set is okay and this is Countable union and intersection. Of measurable sets. So, this is the reason why this collection is measurable, and the equality of these two clearly tells you that that needs little bit of thinking. Yeah. It's not difficult to. So, that shows that since C is arbitrary. To some <coughs> that is well. so that completes now that completes the proof of theorem. So having got this, that means the measurability is preserved under pointwise conversion. So this is something that we will be using. Over and over again. Now we look at what are called the characteristic functions. So we have already seen what characteristic function is. Suppose Now, characteristic function of A <coughs> this is also called the indicator function. It identifies A in a way. Okay, right? So, what we assert is that chi a is measurable A is measurable and only I drop this condition here, but this is the I mean that's quite easy. So K is a map from from R to R. More precisely, it takes only two values, namely 0 and 1. These are the only two values that what you do is you take an, an open interval from here which contains 1 but not 0, pull it back to get A. If Ka is measurable, that pullback has to be 
measurable, therefore A is measurable. Now, if A is measurable, then you can likewise prove that A is measurable. Okay. So we make a remark we have already seen that there exists non measure therefore the character Characteristic functions of such sets are not. Okay, so there exists non measurable sets, and you take characteristic functions of non measurable sets, they are naturally measurable by virtue. So there exists that is non measurable. Now, what more you can prove is that linear combinations of Characteristic functions are measurable. Such functions do play an important role. Integration. Okay, so let us define. A real value F finds Y on a measurable set. E is called it simple. A simple function <coughs> if it is measurable.
and takes only finitely many values. Why? Why not you many? Now, what you need is that all the EKs are are measure. And on EK, Y takes a value So actually what you have is that E is now written as a union of, disjoint union of Measurable sets E1, E2, etc., En. On each of this, you see on E1 it takes the value, C1, E2 it takes the value, C2, etc. On e, En it takes the value, e, Cn. Such functions are what you call simple functions. So, phi is Linear combination of characteristics. Characteristics. Trans. Say, Kai. <clears throat> and EK is essentially the set Now, this is what is called the canonical representation of simple. non kill representation of so we stop our today's lecture. So, we have introduced what are called simple functions. Now, you see that in the context of Riemann integration, we were working with the step functions. They are also simple functions. Okay. And making an approximation of the, the function through step functions. Sorry. Yeah. Through step functions. Here, we are going to 
do it in a more refined way, only we are going to approximate F to what are called the approximate F to a sequence of what are called simple functions. And then through that we introduce the concept of it, as we shall see later. Thank you very much. So the most important part of this talk is that under point-wise convergence, the limit of a sequence of <coughs> measurable functions is again that in a way prepares the ground for us to introduce. We'll do that. Get more consequence of this in the next lectures. Thank you very much.